Hello, this is Justin Seven with SportsbookReview.com. This week I want to get you thinking mathematically about sports handicapping. Mathematicians have been making a fortune gambling for centuries. Recently, some mathematicians used this formula, the Black-Scholes model, to figure out the correct price when you're gambling in the stock market on put and call options. Now it later turned out that this master formula they came up with had some problems in it and it wasn't perfect but people who use it early still made a lot of money and the reason is when you're coming up with a math model to beat anything whether it's the stock market or sports it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to be better than everyone else out there now I want you to think generally about sports betting there are three things you need to consider in any game any major market the three things you can bet on are the money line, that is who's going to win the game, the spread, that is what handicap makes the game a fair match between the two teams when you adjust the score by the spread, and the third thing is the total or the total points scored in the game. Now what a lot of people don't realize is that these three are very related. Just like in the stock market there's something called put call parity where at any given price for a put there should be a theoretically correct price for a call there's also a certain kind of parity between spreads, money lines, and totals. If you know any two of those, a spread, total, or money line, you can always figure out the third one uh, in any major sport. Now here's a very important question. How often do you have to win your bets to expect to make money long term in this game? Some people brag about hitting 53, 55, 56, 60 percent and most of the people who brag about high winning rates are full of it uh, but truth is professionals can make a lot of money just hitting 52 or 53 percent and to show you this I'm going to do an example of a market that's currently up right now let's take a look at the house edge in the San Jose Nevada game if we do a little bit of line shopping from SBR lines we can see that San Jose is a nine and a half point underdog and at pinnacle you can lay 103 you can take Nevada at matchbook at plus 102, although with a commission that's the equivalent of plus 100. If you look at the whole offshore betting industry as the house, how much of an advantage does the house have over you in this particular matchup if you can bet at both Pinnacle and matchbook? If you make both of these bets, you're going to lose $100 on your loser and you'll either win $97 or $100 on your winner. This works out to an average of a $1.5 loss per every $200 risk for a house edge of 0.75 percent. So in this particular matchup if you could pick a winner even 51 percent of the time you have the best of it. When you throw in bonuses or promotions you could actually be a coin flipping monkey hitting exactly 50 percent and win long term. Now I want you to start thinking of everything in terms of math whether it's an economic problem with the Black-Scholes equation to figure out the proper price in a put or if you're trying to figure out what is the proper price on this particular basketball matchup. If you can set a line, in this case that is 1% better than the market's estimate, you're going to make money. So in the next couple of videos I'm going to start showing you a few techniques to gradually improve your line making. That's all for now. The next video I'm going to look at is going to show you how to look at home field advantages across a wide variety of sports. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to send me an email at justin at sportsbookreview.com.